Okay, so we have our final session of the day. Um, we're moving back to discussion about the advertiser-led WFA cross-media measurement initiative. You know, when we first started planning the summit, we were originally going to actually open with this session with Bill Tucker interviewing Ben Jankowski, um, who's heading the media committee at the WFA. But the ANA held their board meeting earlier today, so instead they've agreed to um, be kind enough to be our closing speakers. So they're going to talk a little bit more about the potential of methods and governance um, here in the U.S. And uh, welcome to Bill and Ben. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. Sure. Hey, Jane. How are you? Gay Perry. <laughs> So we're we're standing, we're sitting between you guys and a cocktail. Um, Hopefully, you won't want to like start <laughs> drinking afterwards. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, so Ben, I think we're just going to jump right into it. Cool. Um, you know, you're, uh, you know, executive sponsor of the WFA's Cross Media Measurement Principles Initiative. You've been deeply involved from day one, and I think just to level set, uh, from a marketer's perspective. What's the value creation that will be gained by delivering cross-media measurement? I think ultimately we feel like, again, we have, to, we have to kind of figure out we have a fixed amount of things that we can invest in, right? I've got one, you know, dollar, euro, whatever, name your favorite currency, and if I can't figure out the best place to invest it, then I'm, you know, then I'm at a disadvantage. So we really feel like pulling the... Uh, you know, industry together, and the industry is everybody, right? We had a, you know, there's a lot of different constituents in this. It's really super hard, but we think, so what's the value? The value is, you know, we can get a, you know, planning and or currency, and I understand and appreciate those could be two different things. You know, true cross measurement region frequency, we can, you know, that is the biggest driver for um, us being able to, you know, drive more productivity, right? So if I can, eliminate, you know, things like, you know, if I can eliminate frequency and I can do a better job of targeting individuals and I can do a better job of, of understanding how my investment works. And I think that the other value, I think the value of pulling the group together is heretofore, and somebody made a really interesting observation, I was at a meeting last week, and someone said the biggest observation we made was we, we had to restate who the enemy was, right? So I was in a group of, or an EGDA meeting last week in a group of, you know, European broadcasters who are used to, you know, they're fighting for share with, you know, RTLs fighting for share with SBS and, you know, that, you know, and they've, and they've realized through this process, you know, that the true, you know, they should, you know, figure out ways to partner and, you know, they're not the true enemy and the true enemy in the broadcaster's minds, and I'm not being too controversial, especially in our host office, defining who enemies are, but I think marketers kind of realized we can't do this by ourselves. If I, you know, traditionally, the way we think about it, um, if, if, you know, if the American Express client said, you know, the sun's going to rise tomorrow, I'd be like, eh, I'm not really sure. So inherently, we're used to an environment where it's like we're going to find ways to, you know, find ways to, you know, to, to, you know, not agree. And I think as a marketing group, and Mark Pritchard said it last year at the ANA Media Committee meeting, no one marketer, even the biggest, the largest spend marketer, um, you know, can't do it by themselves. So I think there's value, there's a true value in our ability to hopefully be able to make progress. You know, we will make progress, we're, commit, we're, we're confident of that. Um, and that will help us drive more productivity. I think the value of why the WFA, why the ANA, why the groups are putting so much energy into it. I mean, advertisers are, it's, it's understand and appreciate how hard it is, but we're committed to driving change. And as a group, we think that we can drive more change than we can individually, which is the way we'd normally, we would have normally rolled. Absolutely, I mean, the whole, this, the notion of value, you know, from a frequency management perspective, and also a planning perspective, unique yep. reach, being able to plan across publishers, platforms, television, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's that's the holy grail we're pursuing. Absolutely, um, that is the single biggest thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to get understand reach frequency. We're trying to understand it in, you know, continuous tracking, continuous measurement. Obviously privacy compliant, safety compliant, there's nothing more important than that. But I mean, ultimately, the metric that we're gonna get out of is, how can we, in, and raise your hand if you've never been, you know, bombarded by, you know, 15,000, um, you know, 
as watching a football game for me. It's watching football games on Friday, you know, on Saturday afternoons. Uh, you know, it's just too much. The market's just not good enough. And, and ultimately, if you look at metrics like consumers, um, why are consumers pissed off at advertising? Because the, the model's broken. They're, not, they're, they're seeing, they're just getting bombarded by too much of the same stuff, and we're not doing a great job as an industry managing it. I think the biggest, comp if there's a group to, you know, this kind of held up their hand and said, you know, we're, you know, everybody's responsible. And I think advertisers have looked at it and said, we're one of the most responsible groups. We've been kind of like laid back. And generally speaking, a lot of these conversations, advertisers rely upon, you know, other people to do their work for them. And I think that we're really trying to be aggressive because we really want to try to draft change. Yeah, but this is absolutely, you know, the WFA initiative, which the ANA is a deep participant in, as are ISBA and other yep. other trades, um, is it, it truly um, a marketer, uh, a marketer-led initiative, in, in, in terms of the marketers asserting, you know, assert and, 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 and de deeply participating and establishing the vision as a global executive? Yep. it's an inclusive, um, of, of course, system. But but I think that's an important um, an important thing to just we're here in the U.S. But but and we'll, Absolutely. we get to the U.S. But from a global perspective, you're covering the whole world, how important is this initiative for you, for you in terms of global consistency and, and, and getting principles of cross-media measurement yeah, I mean, established it's, it's, so that markets can... It's mission critical. Every market is complicated, and there's a lot of complications that will drive markets. Some markets have joint industry councils, some markets don't. There's a lot of things out there. Some markets have amazing technology and, and, and great research in the, we're blessed in uh, a big, huge developed country. There's some other countries where we're not that far along. Coming up with a standard principle so we can try to you know, start to keep score the same way is absolutely critical because when you're going out to you know, advertising in 60, 70, 80, hundreds of markets, you, know, you need to be able to find that consistency. So it's, it's super important, but don't want, I don't want to mislead everybody or, or, or make the implication that we're going to create one big, giant black box and everybody in the world's going to deal with it. Absolutely not the case. We're coming up with you know, basic principles, and we're going to work really hard with, you know, the scope and scale. Will we be able to go out to every market from Azerbaijan to Zaire? Get it? A to Z? Huh? Um, will we be able to go out to every single market and hands-on, you know, work with the teams to drive standards? No, probably not. But the big markets and the big markets where we're starting, there's some markets, France, Sweden, who have already done some really cool, really cool things. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. So I think one of the first things we did is the, the WFA is we kind of, this group is we kind of relied upon you know, what's out there. And what's out there, there has been some work done on the, you know, I know the ANA has worked closely with, um, you know, other groups and a group of marketers. Um, Media Mexway work in, is done in France. I butchered that pronunciation of that. Forgive me if you're French. Um, you can talk to me about it later. Um, ISBA's done some work. Um, Germany, Google's done some work in Germany. There's some cool work in Japan. So there's a lot of stuff out there. So we're not we're not starting from scratch. We're going to try to take the the best of that work, but we're trying to come up with overall principles to really kind of help us yeah. drive towards. One, it. one of the principal uh, key areas is standards and, and metrics. I mm -hmm. heard the word standard used a couple of times in, yep. in, in the last uh, yep. panel. And um, would, you, would you just want to elaborate a little bit about standards and metrics? I mean, I will talk to the, yep. the U.S. a little bit, but as you see them globally, uh, when, when the principles were, um, you know, established, sure. the philosophy of how that was. I think one of the things that, and one of the things, and unfortunately, I wasn't here all day. I had some, I had some other things to keep me amused up at my office. Um, one of the biggest things that I, I got from um, one of the last two panels was. People were talking about a whole bunch of different standards and a bunch of different measures. It's like, we have a standard. We have, I mean, George Ivey and the MRC, I mean, we've, like, let's not try to boil the ocean. They've come up with some standards. Let's, you know, let's find some standards. Our, there, I think there's a wide enough range. The other thing is, we're going to have standards. Um, and uh, again, the, the MRC proposal is to provide different. Um, you know, different, you know, uh, measures at each individual uh, duration level, right? So let every marketer, we have minimum standards, which is the minimum that we're going to work with, have every marketer make their own choice. If somebody wants to be more, every marketer, every agency, every partner, I'm not saying it's all marketer-led. Um, if everybody wants to have tighter standards than the minimum standards, then knock yourself out. But I mean, the notion that we have to go run around and, like, again, I heard a couple times, which sort of, like, got me a little bit, like, 
a little bit tilted was, I mean, we have a standard. I and mean, we're just trying to understand if we, and also last week I was in a meeting um, in, where was a meeting with, in, in Paris with the uh, EGTA, which is a group of European broadcasters put together, a really interesting group. And one of the joint industry council members talked about allowing advertisers to use the data. Now, as a marketer, um, first hint, I mean, to a large degree, I'll be nice. Uh, I won't throw in a couple adjectives. I mean, it's our data. We, I mean, it's, it's like information about, like, you know, we pay for the information. We, you know, we're, we're part of that process. I mean, the notion of people having a, a stranglehold on data and information, I mean, like, let the, all we're, you know, we're saying as marketers, like, let the information flow. We have standards. Let the information flow. Everybody will make their own choices. But I think that it's really important to get into a mindset of building basic plumbing. And there's a lot of work that has to go into that. I'm not making it sound easy because it's not. And Jane brought up last week, she, there's a lot of different standards that have to you know, figure out and develop markets. Um, but we're on the journey to try to do that. We'll, if you all grill me on the technical specs today, you'll have a field day because they're not, you know, it's work in progress. Uh, and I'm certainly not the person, if I were the person to do it, we'd, we'd be screwed. Um, but it is, you know, we are, you know, driven around like, you know, there are standards, they're there, and let's use them and let's like let the data flow and let's let marketers and agencies and everybody, and again, it's not just a, it's a win-win for everybody, right? Somebody talked earlier, it might have been Jamie, it might have been somebody else about like, you know, there's a benefit for everybody. The benefit for the media companies is, you know, maximizing your yield because you'll be able to be, you know, better marketers and understand where the business is going better, so. We do have a standard, I know KD said it earlier, yep. the, the MRC standard, <laughs> and, um, and, and the A and A and the A and A board and the marketers, you know, you know we're we're good. Other other markets, uh, uh, you know, will 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 adopt it or they'll have they'll, they'll have their their. Own and I think if we got approach. into the habit of, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Um, if we got into the if we got into the mode of standards, and again, hopefully more people can adopt the standards, so we're not running around playing whack a mole with different standards. That will be the one thing that will make lives crazy for global media owners. Um, agencies, marketers, that will be, you know, that's not what, that's not desired. Um, but if it is, again, I think if we had enough information in there about like, if we had consistency around, we had a full pass at like looking what all the durations look like and things like that, we can let the data flow, marketers and agencies can figure it out. And the MRC has got a good plan for duration and letting, yep. you know, letting Absolutely. the, the market. Absolutely, it's on that plan. Right? Yeah, it's on that plan. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, j j just um, to, to cut to your category, financial services. Yes. So one of the big principal uh, pillars is is privacy and, mm -hmm. and data security, and, and there's no category more important yes. in financial services than really healthcare. For me, for you as a Mastercard executive, um, can you just talk to uh, to how you connect with that principle? Um, and 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 you know you know share how, how you see it um, you know manifesting itself in in the solutions without getting into too many gory details about our business and how we manage. I mean, there is nothing in our business that's more that's more critical than safety and security of our customers and our consumers' information. And we you know we're passionate about being able to drive that. And in fact, if you looked at if you put on a on a row. Uh, I'll call it conservative for the lack of anything better versus I'll call it liberal for the lack of anything better. People who have more, you know, have wider availability to be able to, you know, play with that and things like that. We're at the most, con we're at the most conservative end of that spectrum because we don't, we don't take, you know, we don't take, you know, any chances. We, you know, that, you know, that part's, um, so we're probably like the most conservative end in the marketplace is probably a little bit to leaning a little bit more liberal to us and we'll, you know, that will, and again, that's going to be a, condition that we have to work with with you know the solutions that we build but because everybody's got different um, you know everybody's got different um, you know criteria but it's you know it's built into our culture our, our CEO has made it really clear and a couple people have kind of you know tried to you know stretch boundaries and things like that it just doesn't it's not doesn't happen it's not yeah, and, the, and, the, and the privacy of course yeah, we've got we've got laws that are, are, you know, will have to be complied with as, as, as we build the solutions which in the US we're going to begin to do with you know the ANA leading that yep um, let's talk about governance because I know we want to get to that yep. um, you know we were I was in Paris and we yep. I kicked off that session and we you know we established in the principles that the governance uh, of cross-media measurement will be managed locally by market and, yep. and governance structures and 
will, uh, will vary uh, where there's jigs, where there's nine yep. jigs, but ultimately measurement's local and will be managed locally. Um, so when you, when you think about, um, you know, governance, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, one, one of our principles is neutrality yep. and independence. Yes. You know, can you just expand on that a bit? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we developed and, and Bill's been on the ground floor as a group. Uh, we developed four principles. One is, you know, independent, objective. You just talked about that one. Another one is representative. It's got to be able to talk about today. We're talking about digital and video. And, you know, again, when we sat in the, if, if somebody really wants to pick holes, well, what about you know, skywriting, what about, you know, there are media types that were, you know, the more we talk about it and the more we, the more we try to make it more than it is, you know, this is a journey and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to, you know, build from a position of strength and then we'll go on the journey. So representative, it will have to be able to include um, all kinds of media, right? Well, you talked about privacy. It has to be privacy led. It has to be super, it has to be transparent, right? Because another thing, you know, marketers are not, um, you know, not in the mindset of, you know, to work in non-transparent environments. Uh, and lastly, it has to be future forward. It has to be able to be able to adapt to, you know, when Jamie asked, them, you know, what's changed the most about the, about the TV business in the last five years. It's got to be, you know, future proof. And that's a broad term, right? But we have to kind of figure that out. I think there are two parts of governance. Probably the, the two biggest things about governance um, are how do we deal with the environments of, you know, in markets where there's just different dynamics, right? What do we do in markets where there's, where they're jicks and where they're not jicks? And I think in um, the UK, we saw a presentation last week from ISBA, I think there's 10 different joint industry councils that they're pulling together to all kind of, you know, to work on that project. So some markets are, are, are difficult, some markets aren't. I think we have to figure that part of it out. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I mean, the, the marketers are committed to, we'll figure out an environment where it makes sense and, and where we got governance that kind of, that kind of, can help us, can help us, you know, effectively, powerfully drive that system. The other thing is, who's going to pay for it? Everybody. It's the first question. Everybody before, wants before, to, before I we oh, get it, yeah, I do want to make sure that people are sure. The principle, one of the principles, is representation, and I just want to make sure that um, you know, well, they haven't been issued yet formally, but 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 the the intent is to have them issued, in, in, you know, by the end of February by the WFA, but the government, the the the, the the idea for representation is it's the, the full spectrum um, to include the buying and selling ecosystem, both commercial and editorial, and there should be no unfair representation that would enable any conflicts of, of interest. Thanks. For um, the yeah, for expansion. Yep. Um, so funding. Yep. The the principal uh, language that is we're working with right now that the WFA and the group is working it for funding is that. The measurement service should, uh, you know, the measurement governance service should reflect uh, a funding structure that represents media and constituent members. The solution should not disincentivize the convergence mm -hmm. in media measurement. So it doesn't really prescribe. Nope. It lets the markets, the local markets, figure it out. This was, there was a big debate yeah. in Paris, and I'd love you to just. Yeah, I have a couple that. really simple principles around this. First of all, I mean, there were people when we talked in Paris. I was like, well, until we figure out. Until we figure out what, you know, until we figure out who's going to pay for it, we can't build it. It's like, well, how the hell do you figure out who's going to pay for it if you don't know how much it costs? I don't know. Is it, is it bigger than the bread box? Is it, are we building, you know, are we building a paperclip? Are we building, you know, a, a, you know, a, you know, a ship? Um, don't know. I think that, first of all, second of all, I thought was first of all. I mean, marketers today, we feel like we pay for everything already anyway. Indirectly, the mindset of most marketers is like, wait a minute, I'm already paying for stuff. So just so you guys know, if it wasn't clear, marketers feel like, as a marketing group, this isn't like me talking about MasterCard, ask any marketer in the room, we already feel like we pay for it. Um, I think that one, a couple other key points. A, we gotta figure out what we're gonna build. It's gonna be different by market. Secondly, this is not a bolt-on, right? This is gonna, I mean, I mean, marketers are excited about the proposition of being able to measure this way, and it's gonna replace some of the stuff that we're doing today. And I know that sounds controversial, and I want to freak people out. If we get a great, when, I keep saying, I have confidence, I have faith. When we get a great system going, it's going to replace some of the other stuff that we're doing. So net neutral, when you, t when you take into account, we're going to take some stuff and, you know, we're going to take some, we're going to, you know, sideline some things that this is replaces because it does a better job. And the last thing, and this is like a little bit controversial, but every time I talk about it, no marketer sits there and throws rocks at me, so that's good. Um, if we can prove after we build this 
we're committed to, and again, you, you talked about it, we talked about it a little bit up there, we've done, anybody who's done like basically freak, basic frequency capping analyses, you could save 15, 20% of, you know, if you were able to manage that, you could save, you know, 10, 15, 20%. If we can prove that this new system drives value, if I can prove this new system drives 10% value, 15% value, I'm not throwing those numbers out there because I know because we haven't built it yet. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, marketers, if I can prove, I can walk into my CFO's office and say, yep, I found a new way. We built a new metric and we saved, we can buy 15%, we can get 15% better ROI. But the bad news is I got to put in 2 or 3% to pay extra for it. We'll do it. Again, that sounds, don't walk away with like, advertisers will pay for everything. Great news. Because um, that's not the case. Um, actually, in this session last week, one of the media owners said um, the number they threw around, they threw around a large eight-figure number for the amount of money they spend in panels. And I was like, great, you can pay for it. Um, but, you know, a lot of the stuff is going to, you know, we, we feel like it's going to replace a lot of stuff that are going on out there today. So some combination of everything together, I think it will ultimately, at the end of the day, and we, we talk about it, I mean, basic marketing is like, and this is kind of the trap that we fell into, and I think Jane actually a couple years ago at this, the same meeting, I think I talked about the same thing. The first thing we learn in marketing is being differentiated. And I think in this industry, we've all tried to do something unique and different and differentiated so I can go to my set, you know, my customers, whether it be agencies, whether it be marketers, and say, you know, mine's slightly tilted a little bit differently. And in this respect, we, we, we finally got to the point where it's not serving, you know, the, the it's not serving the industry, and never mind advertisers. So um, in terms of who's going to pay for it, there's a lot of different ways to skin that cat, and I'll be, you know, I will say if we can prove the value, I think advertisers will contribute towards it too. But it's way too early to tell. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't know, Jade, if um, we should run all the way through and open up the floor for questions. Yeah, let's go. Um, but we're, we want to make sure we do that. Um, so if anybody has questions, um, we'd love to hear from you. In Paris, we got a lot of questions. Ben got a lot of questions, actually. Um, Still here. I lived through it. It's good. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about the U.S. plans in the U.S. here. So, the we uh, you know the ANA is, is going to um, to lead a cross measurement initiative, an inclusive uh, an initiative. We've uh, we've brought on Artie uh, Bulgren, who's here to help us do that. Our partner will be um, the MRC, the marketers, and 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 the. The, um, the the digital and the television system, of course, and the measurement companies. We we um, we're we're pacing with our our, our global initiative. You know, in, working with the WFA to uh, to make sure that um, the um, the the concepts as far as tech and plumbing, uh, you know, make makes sense for multinational uh, marketers. And I think probably another uh, three four weeks. That's got to become clear in terms of the working group. So um, we are going to begin to plan this initiative over the next three, four, five weeks, and then begin to um, to reach out, um, you know, to, uh, to to the marketplace to um, to begin to work. A and A board is is very much supportive of this. Um, we won't be the only market. Uh, uh, the UK is going to be doing something ISBA. through ISBA. There's other markets. So. You know, I, I think this is um, it's a it's a, a globally connected initiative. The principles will be highly useful for us in in, in the U.S. And um, you know, we're just getting we're just getting organized to uh, to drive it. My name is Christine Gramier. I'm from the Live Ramp, and uh, one of the things that's gone into a lot of the conversation today is. Um, we use planning and measuring mm -hmm. like intermingled. We we yep. talk about them as if they're one thing, but fundamentally they're actually pretty different 100%. when you put them together. Yep. Um, I'm super curious in the conversations that you guys have had. Um, yep. Are you prioritizing one over the other, one before the other, trying to cover both? So, so I mean, I'll take a shot at it. That true reach and frequency is uh, you know is. It, it impacts it impacts everything. We don't have that right now, but it certainly is going to be um, a planning uh, enabler, uh, so the plans can be built across platforms, across television, 
unique reach at the individual level can, 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 can be determined, and budgets can be optimized. You're also going to be able to manage frequency um, so that you're, 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 you're properly communicating. First of all, you're limiting waste uh, and, 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 and bad consumer experiences. Um, so that's kind of how um, you know, the marketers are talking about it, and that's really, really kind of what the A&A has internalized. Um, sorry, Ben, oh, that was me. Yeah, no, to, um, to build on it, um, I think that the way I think about it, and this isn't like you know, cobbled on a stone tablet anywhere, one is almost, one's almost a planning tool and one's almost an optimization tool, right? So, and I think they're both going to provide value, right? They both have you know, the, the same amount of value, right? And um, to be really honest, we haven't prioritized. I, th I think that, I think that the latter, and this is just one person's opinion, and I don't know if anybody has a different point of view. I think the latter one is going to be easier to build because the latter one will be more like taking what we hope is, you know, a real-time flow of information and being able to optimize that in real time. I mean, the extra step that you'd have. So, so I think the optimization part will be easier, and in the spirit of what we're doing, easier is a relative word. It's all difficult, right? Um, will be, I, th I think that the optimization tool, uh, I'm going to call, let's, let's call it the buying tool, will be the first one because I think it's a little bit easier to do it. Um, because the next step of like, how do you build curves for all the different, like, you know, infinite number of scenarios that you'd have, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a lot harder work. And I think the first natural step will be the optimization side. And I think both will provide everybody tremendous value. Um, I think we'll probably do the optimization one first. Anybody, KD, you have a different opinion on that? Okay. So I think the optimization one, don't have an answer because we're still figuring out what we're building. The optimization one I think is going to be a little bit easier. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, Ryan, in the interest of time, is there any other questions? That was easy. I want to make sure we uh, give everyone a chance to uh, have a drink back here and chat. Thanks so much, you guys, for, uh, for this, for, for being our closing. And I'm sure we're going to all hear more about this soon. Um, and thanks again to everyone here for coming today. Um, big thanks to all the presenters and panelists. Um, and I'd just like the special shout out to the people who helped us to put this program on today. So we have uh, Monica Blanco from Google, Alyssa Lee, our, our host, Elisa Lee, our host, uh, Marzina Del Gaudio from Sim, uh, and also Sarah Holabaugh from Daddy Brand. So uh, find them all and say thank you. So, you know, we hope everyone learned something today, and we look forward to continue to work together to, uh, you know, face and solve for all the challenges that we face. So um, have a drink. The bar is open. <laughs>